Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up, it is Cyber Monday, and I don't know about you, Leo, but I am ready to buy some stuff. Plus, what's the future of Google Plus? How to plan your terrible commute? <laughs> and all about Odd World. It's back. All of that and a game comprised completely of emoji on iPad Today. What? Yeah iPad Today is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, or other Apple product is worth at gazelle.com. And by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have your whole financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash iPad Today. And by... Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you all the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. iPad Today, Cyber Monday edition. Leo Laporte here, Sarah Lane there, playing the canastas. I'm sorry, the castanets. What's a castanet? Cast Castanast. Castanet is the little clickety-clacks oh, that's I love those. used in uh, flamenco dancing. Ah, Canasta cl 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 is a game, a card game that old women play. Is it like mahjong? No, yes. Is it, it was like in the big in rummy? the 50s. My grandma taught it to me. That's why I say it's played by older women, but... Uh, now, as an older woman, I play it a lot. You know, my mom and I used to fight when we, my family got our first computer. It was an IBM something. Um, we used to fight over who got to play Mahjong for like an hour. I like Mahjong. Because it, 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 it was like, what'd you have? Solitaire, Mahjong. There weren't like that many games to play but alone you, that were sort of like meditative. You probably weren't really playing the game Mahjong. You were playing the game, which is really concentration, where you find a tile, you match a tile, they flip over, and then now you find, you're matching tiles, right? Well, isn't that what the, Mahjong's based on? No. I was playing Mahjong. They I don't called, remember how it works they anymore. They called it Mahjong. Oh. It used Mahjong tiles. But to the best of my recollection, it did not play the game by the rules of Mahjong. Oh. Well, uh, maybe I don't know how real Mahjong is played. At the time, I thought it was I'm pretty cool, though. I'm playing Mahjong. Pretty grown up. On a PC. On a PC, yeah. Wow. Sitting there in the office, you know, because you at had to work. sit. You had to. Well, no, I mean, we had an office at our house. Oh, it was a home office. It was the home. But, you know, you had to sit there. Was it a Soho? And then somebody would come in and be like, you know, you only have 20 more minutes. It's my turn. <laughs> There were only three of us. Linnell. Too. I know, she was awful. Great picture, by the way. Isn't that cute? Yeah, I love that of you. And uh, is this on your Facebook that you posted this, Sarah? Uh, it's on or Instagram. Was Instagram. Yeah. So, and it's your Instagram Facebook feed too, is public. Anybody can see it. But yeah. a great picture of Sarah and her mom. I guess it was for Thanksgiving. It was Thanksgiving. Our uh, well, our, my friends just um, got a house up in Forestville with this beautiful. beautiful view. Yeah. yeah, we had a really good time. And, it, and it's, you just two look so. There it is. You two look so. The only sweet thing I don't together. like about it is my shirt is sort of unfortunately like falling forward so it looks like I ate a lot more turkey than I actually did. You look fancy. I look fat. But I like the photo so I posted it anyway. You're both wearing um, swe interesting sweater, busy sweaters. <laughs> Is what, how I would call that. Fancy. You know, I actually wore that exact same shirt for our holiday photo here at Twit. I didn't mean to. I just, I don't know. By the way, I apologize for those of you waiting for your Christmas card from Twit. What's, what's happened? Well, we picked one of the images. We liked it a lot. But one of our employees... There was a nipple showing. Has a nipple showing. So bushy. And... <laughs> no, no, but that's good. I like it. <laughs> no, one of our employees has her eyes closed. Is it me? Debbie. Oh, it's Debbie. And uh, you Lisa's, could just put eyes on her face. That's what Lisa said. Oh, no problem, Leo. You just Photoshop a face from another photo. Yeah. On top of it. Yeah. I said, right. I'll get right on that. Well, make Jason Howell do it or something. Jason, are you a wizard on Photoshop? I don't know. I just. He says, yeah. I just threw him under the bus. Isn't that funny? Because that's exactly what Lisa said. Jason isn't very busy. <laughs> Why don't you have him Photoshop Debbie's eyes onto another? <laughs> <laughs> I, I could do it, 
But it wouldn't look... That was Jason shaking his fist at me. Sorry. I'm afraid that the Twit holiday card would end up in those Photoshop mistakes posts. Because somebody was closing their eyes? You get enough people together, no. someone's always going to have their eyes closed. Oh, because the nipple. Because of after I oh. Photoshop it, right. it will look like this. Right. Yeah. And that... Isn't, and that's going to end up on one of those tumblogs. But if you can somehow make it animated, people will respect you <laughs> a lot. So please try to do that. And, you know, we'll be at the forefront of tech everybody, once again. Everybody looks great. Everybody's eyes are open. Everybody's smiling. Even Ozzy the dog is smiling. Good. Yeah. And Debbie's like this. Like she's drifting off. You know, do you think maybe she was asleep? No, I think it's just, uh, you know, timing. Well... So today we thought, I mean, uh, Black Friday is over, the day after Thanksgiving. And I did not participate. <sighs> That's the last thing I'm going to do is go to a store on Friday. And it's not even because I, you know. You don't want to save money because you don't need to. Well, you know, actually, you know, my rent's going up. So <sighs> I'm going to have to have As a raise. As we all know from last week's episode, your rent is outrageous. And it's getting worse. Hmm. Yeah. They so you, you should have gone to some 5%. Black Friday. So that's the reason people go to Black Friday sales, right? Is because of the, you're going to get a TV for 400 bucks, or you're yeah. going to get a But it's a always limited supply, and that's why you have these stampedes, and people yeah. hurt each other. It scares me. It's I don't... not very civilized. What's really weird is it's spreading. Mm. So... The day after Thanksgiving, as you might imagine, can only be in the U.S. We're the only country in the world that celebrates Thanksgiving on the fourth Thursday of November. But for, for reasons I don't fully understand, England, Denmark, other countries are starting to have Black Friday sales. They, I guess they tie it to our Black Friday somehow. Mm -hmm. So it'd be the fourth Friday in November. Um, and at the Tesco store, so Tesco's kind of like English, England's Walmart, I guess. Um, uh, they had to call the police at seven different Tesco's in the UK because of brawls over doorbuster specials. See, that's the problem. That's just the problem that I have with all of this is you're, you're, you're asking people to behave badly in order to, you know, save some money. And I don't know. I guess I just don't want it that bad. So here's our I thought. I don't want to run in, through a Best Buy ever. Right. Everybody online is offering... Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Frankly, it's the whole By the three way, week period. Somebody on uh, my Twitter feed had mentioned a funny joke. He was like, I'm a little too old for the term Cyber Monday. It really sounds like something different to me. Yeah. And I kind of laughed because I knew what he well, meant. Well, but I don't know what he means. Like what mean? Cyber, A S L, age, sex, location. It's like I am in Cyber. Want to Cyber? It's, it's, is that what the kids cyber say? Cyber is the precursor to sext. So before there was sexting, there was cybering? Well, that's, it was a term that you would I say. must have missed that. Perhaps. Period. Maybe you're too old for I the small window so of those old. of us who think of something. So really, so in your era... When I hear Cyber Monday, I kind of go, tee -hee. Cyber sexting. Well, it's, it I sounds don't. like something yeah. else. But it also just sounds really old-fashioned. Cyber Monday? I well, mean, you know what the why is that a term? It's, I'll tell you exactly okay. why. It is, it's out of date. Thank, thank goodness The you know. idea was... Of course, Black Friday, come, the, the origins of Black Friday, the, the day retails go, go in the black. They've been in the red all year, but they're going to sell so much in the days after Thanksgiving before Christmas that they're going to be in the black, black Friday. It sounds kind of, always to me sound like morning, like the kind of grim, but no, yeah, it's supposed to be right. good. Cyber Monday, the thought was, oh, well, nowadays, 1999, you can buy stuff online. So what a lot of people do is they wait till the Monday after Black Friday to go to work where the fast internet is mm -hmm. and buy stuff. Got it. But it's been a long time since the fastest internet for most of us was at work. You you wouldn't wait to go online till you came here. You know what, but back in the day, totally. Back in the day, it was like you and I your mom. I was like, I had dial up at home Canesta. and we had something right. faster than that at Tech TV, whatever right. it was. So, yeah. so that's where it comes from, it comes from a brief period of time, really late 90s, early 2000s, where you might have had faster internet at work. Nowadays, I think we all have faster internet at home. And the good news is all the online retailers are offering great deals. If you go to thinkgeek.com, up to 60% off their geekage. Mm -hmm. And that's got stuff for geeks. I mean, like, you know, a Tauntaun sleeping bag where you pull out the guts and you get in the sleeping bag. That's geeky. Or uh, a Star Trek red shirt okay. uniform. Mm -hmm. Or a Star Trek red shirt pullover. Um, so those are good places to go.
But the place I would go right now, in fact, I'm going to go there right now because I'm so excited, is Amazon. Ah. They're doing all week. You scooped me. I was going to show Is that going to be yours? Amazon. Well, I mean, You show on. off Amazon. No, 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 no. No, please, go ahead. I mean, Amazon's pretty obvious, but tell me why you're so happy well, about Well, now, and, and I'm curious which Amazon you use because there's two different Amazon apps. There are, and actually, I prefer the other. So this is Window Shop, mm. which is more like uh, window shopping. So some people kind of prefer this. Uh, layout where you, you're browsing. You'll, you could you could pick a category like our favorite electronics, it's, and yeah, then it's browse. It's tile based. It's tile based. Yeah, and it's and it, it really is. And it, it and it kind of scrolls forever and yeah yeah it's. But it's really kind of mixed up. I mean, look, they've got uh, HDMI cables, or actually that's a USB cable. Please don't give anybody a USB cable for Christmas. Never. That's kind of an insult. That's that's one step up from a lump of coal. So it's an eleven dollar USB cable right next to a four hundred dollar. Hero 4 Silver, the latest GoPro. See, I don't know if those belong together. Maybe they do. But Amazon, it's a machine. It doesn't Well, but know. look, you've got camera photo in the in the column. Here's a giant and jackery. And then you've got, you've got car electronics. So you're looking at two different columns. It's... See? Oh. So you got to go, you got to go top oh. down. That's I why. I get it. All this time I've used this app and I've never understood it. I guess, uh, yeah, well, you know, that's what I'm here for. Show us the better one, would you? I, well, it's not better. It's, it just more closely resembles Amazon. Amazon. If you were to go to Amazon.com. It's like is, the website. It, it's basically the mobile site, but it is an app. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know that any of us would ever say, boy, Amazon sure is the prettiest experience. It's just that they have everything. Well, and I note right? one thing. I feel like they haven't kept uh, uh, the window shop experience up to date because... I don't see anything that says Cyber Monday on here, but you went ah. to the Amazon app and right away it shows you yeah. the deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's so don't use Windows Shop to do the Cyber Monday deals. Well, but yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, seriously, yeah. Because some it's of these deals themes. are day to day only. Some of them will be for the, the see the lightning deals below the deal of the day. Amazon Fire TV seventy bucks today. But look at these are for one hour. Suncast Golf Organizer. And you see when yeah, it's when it's you. closed, it's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are their doorbusters. Right. And the idea is, <laughs> no, who's going to buy? Who's going to buy the uh, power adapter? I'm going to look a great stocking stuffer. Here's a UK power I adapter. I kind of need a new vacuum, actually. Maybe That's I not a good gift either. things for myself. That's what ends up happening. Well, for you know what? Also, well, no, that's different. Than that. But see these, yeah. so some of these you see at the bottom, there's, some of those are closed, see? So the yeah. idea is these this are doorbusters. This one ends in 42 minutes. If no, you but it's want closed. Trash it's can, too late. No, ends in 42 minutes. What does it say above that? Oh, 100% clean. So they have. There's two time. There's two limits. One it's, is how many they have, and one is how long they have. I, I'm sure this is all you know false inventory. It's right? doorbusters. It's yeah. the same idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the idea is to keep you on the Amazon app or website, like <laughs> every minute of the day for the next seven days. It's cool though. I think one of the things that you know, people say, oh yeah, sure, you can buy anything on Amazon. But Amazon is, by most people, still thought of as, oh well, I can get books there, and then some eBooks and electronics, and and maybe some you know better deals, and there's you know, digital TV shows and that sort of thing. But Amazon really does have everything. I mean, when you're shopping by department, for example, I mean, I'm in the CD and vinyl section. Yeah. I mean, would you think to go to Amazon for like an old vinyl record? No, I would think, oh, I got to go to some like secondhand record shop in some weird neighborhood. You know, it's like you actually can you can get a karaoke machine from Amazon. Those are karaoke discs. Yeah, right. That's nice. I, I don't know. It's it's the nice thing. I mean, I am tempted to always it, to it shop never, on Amazon. It never stops because they'll groceries. do gift they'll do gift wrapping. Yeah. For a couple of bucks more, yeah, you could yeah. put a little card. It's kind of a you know computer printed card. It doesn't. It, it's pretty obvious. That but you if got it's it somebody Amazon. that you know you're not going to see, it's a nice touch. It's a, it's the niece and nephew gift store. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. When uh, when it was Christmas, we saved the parent the presents from Santa and mom and dad for Christmas Day. But on Christmas Eve, you could open the presents from the aunts, the uncles, the distant relatives, sure. the second cousins, because mm. those were going to be. Not such great gifts. Mm -hmm. Sushi making kits. That's it, right there. Hey. I could tell you're an aunt. No, I'm not you're actually. You're not an aunt? I'm not an aunt. Who would you send that to? Um, Linnell? I think I, I know a lot of people who are sushi love chef. sushi, and why not? Give them a kit. I, you know, All you need is a, the fish. That's a great gift. I'll tell you why. Why? People think you think they're a great chef. And have a respect for their cooking right, skills. Right, exactly. They will never use it because, of course, no one's ever going to use a sushi kit. 
But what they don't, what they do is they know this is a perfect example. They know they'll never use it, so they put that in the regift drawer. So it's a it's a gift that keeps on giving. What is wrong with you? No, that's exactly what that is, no, isn't it? it no. It's the regift drawer. This is awesome. Look, it even comes with stuff. Yeah, no one's ever going to use that. I would. Look, you can put it in your body. Okay, if you used it, you'd use it once. It's like a fondue <laughs> set. If you now, use it, you'd use it once. If somebody gave me a fondue set, that would never re-gift. be used. But ever. the thing is, you. But sushi the sushi is different. Sushi's. Uh, uh, it's. It's a. Uh, it's praising somebody. It's. It's. It's a. It's a. A wonderful thing. You say. Right. I know you're a great cook. You're a do-it-yourselfer. I trust you. I think you might make you, sushi. To, yeah, to make good use. And of so this. I'm going to send you this kit, and the person will go, "Oh, isn't that that's so nice?" Sarah thought that I would do this. I'm really touched. Put that in the regift drawer. You know what? I also need. I'm just going to go ahead and talk about myself. No, is uh. uh no, you should have a wish list at Amazon. Do you? No, because I don't. I don't know. Nobody's gonna buy anything for me anymore. Oh, oh, folks at home. And nobody, and I'm not, I'm not buying anything for anybody either. If just, Sarah had a wish list on Amazon, wouldn't you just run oh, over there and that, get her a little something? No, that's that's. Oh, pandering. you'd be, you'd be, but it is pandering, absolutely. Absolutely, I guess I'm not above <laughs> that, really. What I do think, though, is, and this is, I don't know, I mean, spinner bag, never buy ever again. The two-wheel bag, always four-wheel. Oh, and I don't have one of those. Yeah, see what I'm saying? I'm a little out of date. In fact, I don't, even ha- I don't even have a good carry-on anymore. I'm good walking around with a great. duffel. It's what stupid. is that one? That looks pretty good. Uh, this is the... That looks pretty good. Yeah. Let's see what the price is. You're not signed in, so you can't get it. Rockland. I, remember, I don't Which know about one Rockland. Was it? The, one I, the one that we saw. You, there, you know, you got a bunch of choices. American just, Tourister, that's not bad. I, I, that's cute. Yeah. I'd be into that. I love it. Look at that. Spinner, spinner. Yeah, so I don't know. It's maybe you think that luggage is a weird gift, but I think luggage is a great gift. Again. Because it because you're saying, I think you might need this, and I would like you to come visit me. It's a compliment. Right. It's saying you're a world traveler. I know that. And I know that the best thing I could give you is something that lets you get out of town. That's right. It, and fits in an overhead compartment. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Okay, I'll tell you where I did. Have you done any Christmas shopping yet? No, I, I'm not kidding when I say I don't do any. You have no one to give a Christmas gift I have gift no to? one to... I mean, I'll get something for my mom. That's like the saddest thing I ever heard. And I'll go to some holiday parties and I'll bring some nice wine. I guess that's gifty. Yeah, wine's I am doing not bad. a potluck uh, white elephant, so there's that. But no, I just don't... You know, I don't... I don't like to feel forced into buying things for people. And they're, it's thi- called and they're things that they don't really want. gift. Yeah. It's called... Christmas. It's called no, Hanukkah. Well, it's called. Oh, you're such a Grinch. Okay, fine. Let's exchange <laughs> gifts this year. No, I don't want to give you. Any. Told you. <laughs> so I have done some Christmas shopping already. Uh-huh. Uh huh. For the kids, and I recommend this. I went to the plan. This is not an iPad recommendation. I went to the Planetary Society. Okay. And because I, I, you know, I love space exploration. In fact, we just did a triangulation talking about Mars. But I got them. They have a date book with uh, for the whole year with beautiful space pictures uh it's gorgeous about 19 bucks wonderful and then they have if if you have a kid who has likes to put posters on the wall they have a poster size version of that that's the planetary society but i will tell you where i went i'm not gonna should i sign in um i'm not gonna sign in i'll tell you because i don't use this ipad but i'll tell you where i did my shopping so far etsy we love etsy I love Etsy. Who doesn't? All women love Etsy. Let me well, and men too. And dogs, so I hear. So Etsy, Etsy is, as you know, it's probably, it's a marketplace of handmade stuff, generally right. populated by artisans who make v- wonderful stuff. Uh, sometimes it's very unusual, unique things. It could um, be jewelry, furniture, artwork, sweaters. Look at that. I mean, it's, it's all so focused cool. on... An opti- octopus tentacle ring. That's really cool, actually. And as you browse Etsy, one of the things uh, some of the people in my life do is they save things they like to their Etsy list. And that makes it really easy to shop for you. You're right. Some of these would be great for guys. How about a math watch for the geek in your life? <laughs> That's cool. All the, uh, all the six times tw- two is 12, right? 24, 13 minus 20, 12 is 1, square root of 4. So as you go around, you have to do some math. Square root of 64 it's for 8 p.m. You have to do some math to get the uh, time. Isn't that nice? That's a man. Well, it says unisex, but $40. That's a great gift. Well, it depends on how big it is. How about this one for people who are I, habitually late? Whatever I'm late anyway, that's, that is the watch for me. <laughs> that is honestly the watch for me. Forget Watchville. I just need that one. Exactly. And then when somebody gives me grief, I just... 
Throw get, that in their face. That's, I know some. I know some really people give me. Really hard too. Just throw it. Look at that. This is a great one for your mother-in-law. Thank you for raising the man of my dreams. Just a little pendant. She'll never wear it because it's ugly. But it's the thought that counts. You know what I'm saying? I don't buy that for anybody. It's it's That's the so... thought. How about this one? I don't want to be rude. Here's it's a, a gymnastics seems... necklace. Now that I like. Yeah. Hey. Doing some splits. So I highly recommend you download the Etsy app. As you can see, it's made for iPad. It's really fun to browse. If you see something you like, you can save it on Etsy, but you can also save it on Pinterest. How about faux taxidermy? See, there's a category you don't really think about much. Paper mache taxidermy. <laughs> it's a unicorn head. Felted faux taxidermy. I don't even know this is a category. So I, this is where I did my uh, Christmas shopping uh, for the lady in my life. Oh. But I made it easy because I know she likes jewelry. I, I know she likes heirloom jewelry. Mm. And she sent me an email saying, buy me this. Yeah. So it was... <laughs> it wasn't, so you, it, there wasn't a lot of guesswork. It wasn't too hard, but it, you, you could see how fun it is. And even for gift cards, because it's one thing uh, to uh, buy the gift, but then maybe give uh, somebody a gift card, $100, $200, Gift card to Etsy, what a nice gift that would be. And that's something you could send last minute. So ETS, well, you know about Etsy, but maybe you haven't spent much time on their uh, really great iPad app. It's full of wonderful gifts. I like the idea of this because it feels a little bit less like it's a mass-produced thing. It's, and it, because it's, it isn't. Yeah, In fact, each Etsy, is unique. I believe that they've changed their rules a little bit. Look at that. But, the, but there were actually, you know, the terms and conditions of being an Etsy seller was you couldn't be mass producing a bunch of stuff in you know some warehouse somewhere. It's right. really it's really focused These on are, right. I'm a you know a maker of something special and and that's why I'm selling this to to really honor people who are who are you know they're they're independent. Twenty four dollars for a penguin enamel brooch isn't that cute? Yeah. Or how about antique teeny tiny German snow babies? Nope. That's a no. <laughs> hey, but there's no accounting for taste, right? No, but that's what's great One about Etsy. One man's there's... snow bunny is another man's I, bull. I would bet you could do every bit of shopping that you needed to do. <laughs> every bit. Right here right for everybody in your list. Mm -hmm. Couldn't you? I, I, yeah, I mean, maybe not all oh, jewelry on Etsy. I'm sending Kevin Rose this. He's already got one. He has an old 80s digital gold. He's watch. Got, he's got it all. He's got every watch ever made. The man who's got everything. This is this is like actually this isn't a watch though. It's a brooch. So uh, she oh. she turned it into a pin. Oh. Isn't that kind of cool? Now that's kind of fun. Is that fun? It's a conversation piece. It's a conversation starter. That's right. Yeah, I don't know where you're gonna go once you say, "Hey, What's are you that? wearing an old Casio pin?" Got it on you Etsy. Say, yeah, and then they go, "Okay, How bye." How about two vintage Mexican mariachi men <laughs> playing guitar, banjo? Okay. <laughs> That's from Judy's treasure chest. That's what we used to call her in high school. Uh, here we go. This is a vintage signed JJ you, Silver Pewter Elephant. You with... are ma sort of making it seem like Etsy is just strange jewelry. It, it is, and it's so it's everything. There are a lot of categories. It, wall hangings. Have you bought your wreath yet? I don't do that. Who's gonna what see my wreath? What a grinch! I live at the top of a. <laughs> You're at the top of the stairs. Nobody's ever gonna come up your no, way. No, well, I mean the people across the way. Then put this would on your see, door. I Bob, guess. Bob Dylan grimacing. I would. Go and right, go away. <laughs> That'd work. I, uh, I would probably hang that on my wall. You see what I'm saying? I like his skirt. How about this? A 1950s photography magazine page of a creepy couple. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. It, that's the point of this. Is it's just some person, vintage gorilla? Well, we who's need been, a copy editor. I just love these. I don't know what you do. I do you frame them. Yeah. Yeah. Etsy has anything you can imagine. They really do. And you can search for something if you're looking for something that you're not just finding as you're browsing the sweater right. section. I'm just, this is all in the vintage section. I mean, yeah. I'm not even in, you know, I mean. Right. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of, like, mobile accessories mm -hmm. and. Look and at wooden watches. What a great idea. Watches are, like, hot, man. Oh. Whoa, that one's cool. It is. Actually. An, yeah. And it's not very expensive. No. See, that's, that's what's nice. It's actually beautiful. You can, it, a groomsman's gift. Genuine leather. Yeah. Groomsman. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Anyway, Etsy. Love it. Love it. You know, uh, I, I, I know this is like the most obvious uh, uh, app that I might talk about for shopping on the show, but the Apple Store app is better than going into an Apple Store for the next three weeks. That's how I got my iPhone. Yeah. It was the only way you could get one. Right. The Apple Store app is 
it, it can be used as just a way to order something, or you can order to pick up later in store, which obviously saves you a lot of grief because you go right in there and you're just like, we're good. But um, but yeah, I mean, if anything, for example, I just uh, this is the the new uh, iPad Air two, which I was a able to very easily. Did you? Um, is that how you bought it? Mm -hmm. Yep. And you know, you've got obviously Macs and iPhones and you know all the Apple stuff. But I mean, accessories is a great area that you you know you think. I think people think, oh, Apple Store, it's, well, I don't need a new MacBook, so I don't know, why am I going to use the Apple Store app? But Apple has a lot of accessories that are, you know, Apple-friendly that are kind of fun. For example, the Parrot Mini Drone. It's mm, 160 bucks. Look at that thing. Or you've got, you know, a little DJ sound system. This would be great for somebody's, you know, uh, my friends, I, I mentioned they just got a new house. This would be great for something on their deck so they don't have to wire the whole place with all these speakers. You know, you just have the little portable Philips DJ sound system outside, have a little fun, you know, next time I come over. You've got... I have to say, when you're buying non-Apple stuff on the Apple Store, it's nice because it feels curated. It does. It feels like somebody took the time to try this stuff and only put the best stuff on there. Uh, unless it's Bose, in which case we're not going to put it on there because we have That's kind of cool. Oh, that's an Ergotron arm. Sit-stand workstation. We I use those. Seen... Not that particular one, but we use right. a lot of Ergotron this stuff. This one I haven't seen before, and I actually kind of like it because it looks like it's a space saver yeah. for somebody who has a small amount of space. Yeah. You Because know, a lot of the standing desks that are... Um, That'd get out of your way, wouldn't are it? Are lovely, yeah. but they're too big. This is just a laptop stand. It's, this is actually. Yes, I'm go ahead and save. Three hundred bucks. For that myself. you know, that's awesome. Yeah, look. Yeah. Check for availability, features, what's in the box. Available to ship in one business day. Do you? I'd I like to know more. Say, does that sit on a desk or does that sit on the floor? I think that sits on the desk. Oh, you, really? Yeah. Uh, uh. But see, that's the problem. You can't tell from the picture there. No, but I think But my guess you're is that sits right. on a desk, not oh, on the floor. Oh, that's why it was so perfect. Let's look. Mm. Mm, I wish they'd tell me more. I don't know. That looks like... No, it sits on the desk. No, look. This is when you're sitting. And then mm. this is when you're standing. Mm. Well, I don't looks know. Looks like it sits on a desk. You might be right. I don't know. Crap. Yeah, What's you're What's that? Right. That's how it sits on the desk. Suction cups. Darn it. Tag nabbit. You can see, though. I mean, this is, you could obviously... Clips to the desk. Yeah. Well, crap. I thought it was something <laughs> better than it Send was. Send it back. I, I like it. I just don't like it yeah. as much what as I What do you I want? Is you, like it sounds it. like you want something that sits on the, stands on the floor. Yeah. I basically want Can, a Are you small... allowed in your apartment to bolt hardware to the floor? It's a hardwood floor. Yeah, I think that would be. Not. I can't imagine anybody giving me the go ahead on that. Yeah. Although they did just raise my rent, so maybe I should push for some I stuff. I think that's the way. As long as you don't go all the way through the floor to the neighbors, you I, wouldn't want a hole in the ceiling that you could go, hey, how you doing? My downstairs neighbor, once I was uh, chasing my cat Sam around the house just to be fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because that's and fun. And like five seconds later, I get a phone call. And, and she says, you know, I, I don't know if you realize just how much sound travels. And I was like, well, I was actually Oops. barreling through my home. I Oops. was doing that. So now I walk softly and I carry a big stick. <laughs> Every once in a while you go, boom. Yeah. <laughs> no, here. I do. I, oh, I think about her all the time now because I don't yeah. want to be disruptive. No running. But that's fine. It's safety. Do you first. take off your shoes now and run well, around? Well, I take off my shoes anyway feet. because you should see my neighborhood. You don't Ooh. want to walk around with Soma on your floor. We mentioned it's Cyber Monday, but you know, you the, some of the Black Friday apps. In fact, this is called Black Friday. Are still working for Cyber Monday? Mm -hmm. um, uh, there are lots of deals, and if you look around, you could see here's a 49-inch 1080p LG TV from Walmart, and. Uh, but they aren't giving me a price, which kind of takes away some of the excitement on it. But then it also shows you related deals. So that, that's a signal. Oh, I want a TV. Well, what about this? This is a sharp 59-inch LED that comes with a Roku streaming stick for 500 bucks at Best Buy. So this is a great way to kind of do your reconnoitering before you head out on Cyber Monday. Lots of deals here. And it's a free app you can download. $69 for a Fitbit Flex. A dual band router from Netgear, that's a good one, $89.97. TVs, I think, are what people really think of Cyber Monday and, and Black Friday as being. Here's a 58-inch Sanyo for $4.99. I can't believe how cheap TVs are. So that's, uh, that's a, it's a simple app, and uh, it is updated. I did check. And so, for instance, here's the Nordstrom Cyber Monday beauty sale. I could use that. 50% off. Yep. Couldn't we all? Beauty's half off at Nordstrom right now. Good.
Thank you, Nordstrom. Thank you for uh, making us all a little bit more beautiful this Monday. Or, if you want to go the other way, here's a Presto Graham Pappy Elite Electric Six Cup Deep Fryer. I find that deep fried foods are good for my beauty regimen. Sure, because they help fill in pores with grease. Yes. Notice, it's no wrinkles. proven. Look at him. The man looks 29. Like a baby's butt. That's right. Very soft. <laughs> no pores at all. I owe it all. all to my grandpappy deep fryer. I don't have a deep fryer. No, you shouldn't. I don't like deep fried stuff. For, oh, I like it, but having it's a bad part, idea. I'm, no. You didn't deep fry the chicken? I mean, the turkey for uh, Thanksgiving? No. Did not. Um, I don't popular. know how it was made. I wasn't part of that. Probably. I ate a lot of it. Was it was it at mom's the Thanksgiving? Mom got some turkey. Nice. Um, friend of mine got some turkey. Nice. Together I had quite a bit of turkey, and then uh, I had turkey for leftovers, and then I had more turkey. We we went to the Niners game, so we had turkey dogs, but that we didn't have turkey. But I felt a little uh, verklempt. I left. I felt left out. Yeah. So you know what I did on it's a Sunday? Fun, it's a fun Thanksgiving, but you do miss out on the big table and the... I made my uh, my, my Nona's uh, sausage stuffing. Ooh. No turkey. Because I realized, you know, all I really like on Thanksgiving is... Stuffing. Stuffing and cranberry yeah. sauce. You know, I was so excited um, for Thanksgiving. I was just so pumped. Because I eat turkey now, so the whole thing is, like, way more fun than mm -hmm. it used to be for me. Um, I was so pumped that I made stuffing on Tuesday. I couldn't wait. <laughs> you see? But I made like part. a huge recipe for like eight people. I've still got it. Oh, stuffing goes a long way if you yeah. don't have a big fan. Yeah. And then uh, now some people say to me, well, Leo, you can't make stuffing unless you stuff it in a bird and it gets that bird flavor. No, no. The key is three or four sticks of butter. Oh. Put that right in there. I find that if you add three or four sticks of butter to anything, better. then it's good. Butter makes it better. Yeah. Don't like my beets? Add some butter. And uh, so my Italian grandma, her trick, just so you know, mm. Jimmy Dean pure pork sausage, sage. Okay. So you cook, cook some of that up. And uh, then you put in the, the dried bread, or you can get the stuffing mix, it's fine, because that's all it is, Is Jimmy bread. Dean a real man? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Not to be confused with James Dean. No, Jimmy Dean was a country singer. Okay, that's, but is this his food? Yeah. So he had a line of food? He did, he even did the ads. Jimmy Dean pure pork country sausage. I didn't know that. And uh, and so you get the Jimmy Dean, you get it in the tube, you cut the tube in half, I put about half in. It depends how much stuffing sausage you want. Uh, stuffing mix, lots of butter, celery, onions. But here's Grandma's secret ingredient. Tell us. About, about half a cup of orange juice. Oh. You don't taste it. Once I made uh, the mistake of putting a whole cup in there, you taste it, not good. Yeah. But a half cup, it moistens it, it gives it something, a certain je ne sais quoi. A little sweetness that you can't quite identify. Exactly. It's orange without... Orange. Without orange flavor. Huh. And the Jimmy Dean, of course, has the sage in there. Gives it a nice, uh, rich... There he is. He passed away four years ago. Oh. That's a post-mortem picture. Oh, that's picture. Jimmy Dean. Oh, you I know recognize him. him. What was yeah. his big hit, Brian Burnett? You'd know that. My name's Jim Dean. No idea. Brian wouldn't know. <laughs> Brian's... <laughs> Okay. Uh, All right. All right. Are we still doing apps or are we done? No, we're done. Um, and if you would like some of the links to any of the apps that we just mentioned, they're all kind of obvious, but we're going to put them in the show notes anyway because we uh, value consistency Trailers here on iPad for Sailor and Twitter.tv slash IPT is our website. Uh, we had a good we had a good show last week. Talked about a lot of stuff. Look, Leo and I laughed. We, we cried. A, we laughed. We did cry actually. We and, kissed uh, five bucks goodbye. Right. And and uh, and 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 we loved having you. A uh, quick reminder Big that we record John. iPad Today live on Big Bad John Mondays uh, right after Triangulation and before this week in Enterprise Big Tech at about twelve thirty Pacific time. Big it's always nice when you join us live. And if you can't, then, well, screw you. But you can watch us on demand, or you can listen to us as well. You know, listening to podcasts is all the rage, Leo, these days. So you can do that as well. You'll miss everything visual on the show, but I'm not going to judge you. I'm a very non-judgmental person. So Big thanks in advance. Okay. Big bad John. Oh, look at him. Little Jimmy Dean. That's the Jimmy Dean. He did not do trailers for Sailor Rent. I was misled by the chat room. That was, of course, Roger well, Miller. The chat room will lead you astray. But who could forget Big John, PT109, that new old-fashioned love, Angel in an Apron, or my favorite, Waking Up to Love. I actually don't know any of these songs. It's like that kind of country music that's before my time and... 
nobody ever played it in my presence, <laughs> so I just don't. Well, don't what know. happened was his know. career waned because of people like you stopped listening to country music. Well, I never started. And so he had to go into the sausage business. I see. He had a few pigs, and he said, you know, pure said, pig sausage. I'm, I'm Jimmy Dean, mm -hmm. and I know my sausage. I know my, my sausage. Um, you know what I do know a what? lot about what? is the fact that I have way too many gadgets <laughs> that I, like, have in various... <laughs> Yes. That I have in various pockets of things. You still carry that 5S around yeah, just for fun? Yeah, I do this when I need to Look at that. waste time and kind of sit in you know, the bar and start concentrating. Drink your Manhattan when I'm alone. and just flip your this phone. This is quite a conversation starter, yeah. you know? Hey, some people Another do it with look. coins. Oh, she dropped it. It's fine. Everything's fine. But you know what? what? I should probably wipe it and give it back. Well, or sell it. No, it's not yours. <sighs> Wait a minute, I'm looking here. Yeah. You say, you're, 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 you're throwing me into an ad, I can tell. Yeah. But I see, I looked, I, I looked at that and I said, oh, I don't, I, but I guess that's mm. the wrong one. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's yeah. see here. Oh. This was. Gazelle. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. See, I knew you'd get it. I don't take a hint very well, as you probably On the learned. Uptake. On knowing me the for uptake. 14 years now. Good grief. Is that Is, how long it's been? Like 13 or 14 years. Oh. When did you start at Tech TV? It's been 14 years. So you still haven't learned that I do not take a hint. Well, the, sometimes you do, though. Sometimes you're so good that I just hope today will be the day. But I, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's asking too much of you. That time you closed the door in my face, I took that hint. You're the guy who shouldn't get the sushi kit, because I know you're not going to use it. Don't give me no sushi kit. <laughs> <laughs> Our show today brought to you by the company that's going to help you pay for all this great stuff you're giving your friends and family for the holidays. Maybe even there'll be a little leftover for you to get a little something, something for yourself. I'm talking about Gazelle. If you've got a gadget drawer, and what geek doesn't have a drawer full of old gadgets that are no good anymore? Gathering dust. I don't want you to think of that old gadget drawer as just a drawer full of gadgets. I want you to think of that gadget drawer as a drawer full of $100 bills, my friend. Oh, okay. Solid American greenbacks because... Gazelle will turn those old gadgets into greenbacks. Your iPads. You ready for the iPad Air 2? They actually buy broken iPads if you got one in there. It's broken. Or broken iPhones. Just trade in your phone. Oh, look at this. Here it is. This is a, the old Air 32 gig Wi Fi. Wi Fi. 210 bucks in, in decent shape. That is not just today. That is not just tomorrow. That is for the next 30 days. That means you've got time. Perhaps you're expecting a new iPad under the Hanukkah bush. Now's the time to get the quote for the old iPad because any time in the next 30 days you can pull the trigger, do it for as many gadgets as you can find around the house, even if you don't want to sell them, just get a quote. And then when you say check out, they'll send you a, a box, prepaid shipping. So you don't have to pay the shipping on it. You pile those gadgets in, they'll turn them around fast with a check, a PayPal credit, or if you're doing a little shopping on Amazon, this would be a good time to build up that Amazon gift card credit, they'll give you 5% more on Amazon gift cards if they pay you in those. So that's a nice deal. Nine out of 10 Gazelle people have an excellent experience. Two plus million trade-ins, $175 million paid out to customers. It is a, an amazing site. I don't know if, if Gazelle didn't exist, we would have to invent it. They will buy pre-certified, oh, they sell now, by the way. You might wonder what happens to those phones. They don't put them in the landfill. Uh, they have had an eBay store. Now they can do it. You can buy right on Gazelle, new from Gazelle. Certified pre-owned iPhones, Samsung Galaxy phones, and iPads directly from Gazelle. So this is another uh, kind of very cool thing. You could do your shopping here, or if you've lost or broken your phone, replace it at a lower cost with a pre-owned device. And, of course, Gazelle.com has great deals. Devices are available in two conditions, certified like new and certified good, of course, Certified good devices show some gentle signs of wear, but you'll get even more savings. And all devices are put through Gazelle's 30-point rigorous inspection to make sure they're fully functional. You'll be happy to have them. And, of course, you get a 30-day risk-free return policy. You know what? I might do my shopping uh, at Gazelle. Gazelle.com. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E. -E. Keep it moving at Gazelle. All right. So... Did you read over the weekend, I think it was over the weekend or maybe it was right before, um, the, the post uh, by uh, Chris Messina? I did. Who worked on Google Plus for he's, a number of years. He says it's, uh, he stopped working there 400 days ago. Yeah. 
And he and he's and he. It, it, this was a very um, interesting. Oh, I see what you were doing, Brian. I see where the black I box was. I see what was. you're doing, Brian. Brian, you're so good. You're always thinking ahead. He's he's uh, edited out the bad word that's in the post. I effed up. Right. But so has Google Plus. He says. Now, did you read Mike Elgin's point by point destruction no, of this piece? No, but I think Mike was right. Well. Okay. Uh, Let me get. I happen to know Mike Elgin. He also wears Google Glass. Let me get Mike Elgin in here. No, no, it's all right, Jeff. Jeff's getting up to get Mike. No, no, please. <laughs> please, no. I agree We're with Mike Elgin. We're on a very Elgin. tight schedule. So Chris Messina, who has, by the way, a lot of geek cred. He's yes. the guy who invented the hashtag. Mm. Um, he is uh, one of the really instrumental people in micro formats and a lot of open source stuff. He went to Google uh, to promote open uh, uh uh, standards, but he also worked on the design of Google Plus. So, in fact, one of the things he says in his article is, "I was I we designed the polls, the latest feature to be introduced in Google. That was ready to go when I left 400 days ago." Yeah. So what are they doing? He and, says, and he's also sort of accused their you know QA team of not caring so much anymore. And he back, was wrong on that. Back, he admits it. Yeah, and he said so. But, but I thought the reason that I brought it up is because Google Plus actually has a pretty nice iPad app. Now, I am not a Google Plus user. I, I really did sort of abandon oh, love Google Plus. the network uh, some time ago. But it's not because... Little Bob. I know. But see, I see that on Facebook, too. Uh, oh, little Bob. You think Facebook... Following. By the way, this was the gist of Mike's piece. Facebook's crap. Google Plus is right. You, th you like Facebook? You prefer Facebook? Yes, because that's where everybody is. And it's all about the people. I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I do feel that way. Don't you resent a little bit that Facebook doesn't even show you all the stuff your friends post? You can, you can do it in chronological order rather than um, weighted by the algorithm. And you think you still see everything? Well, I don't need to see everything. Ah. Uh. Yeah, it's, for me, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of things wrong with Facebook, but Google Plus is, it, I don't, there's not enough content there. There just isn't. Oh, well, it's also, you haven't circled enough people. I have a lot of people the in my circles is you because want, I was very bullish on it at the beginning. You want your content to be from family and friends, and no. they don't post on Google Plus. They post only on Facebook. Nobody posts on Google Plus that I know besides you. And I see tons of posts well, all the time it, on my Google Plus. Yeah, a lot of the stuff that I see, I feel like is... You know, and I'm guilty of this too for a while. You know, I would use it kind of as a promotional tool, and I just didn't feel like I was getting really a lot of feedback back. Really? Yeah, really. However, hmm. I do think that, no, I mean, of course, it's like, sure, there's Tom Merritt and Scott Johnson and Louis and Casey and... Well, you got a few people that you know on there. For sure, and Danny Sullivan. It's not as if nobody uses it. I just think it's it's a, it's an underutilized network. And I'm... Well, do you, do you agree not, with it's, Chris it's poorly designed, or do you think it's just... No, I actually think that the app is quite nice. Yeah, I think it's quite well done. Yeah, the, I've got no problem with this app. Again, I just feel like um, there's just... It, my community seems to be in other places. It's really on Twitter. I, you know, it's, it's, if I'm going to... If I'm going to compare two networks, Facebook is sort of in a world its own because it is a lot of family and friends. Um, in fact, Facebook was insufferable over this weekend with all the thanks and the turkeys and the family photos. Yeah, see, I don't really Come care on. about that. Yeah. But, but, uh, but I, but I've always liked the Google Plus app. In fact, it's the way that if I want to read about this Chris Rock interview, which was actually quite that good. That is a great interview with Frank Rich. Wasn't it good? Must read yeah, interview. Yeah. Chris Rock is really smart. He is. And I he, was know. very surprised. And this is just, I, I don't know, I. I don't dislike Google so Plus. So I wouldn't have known about that, and you wouldn't have known about that. We probably both saw Casey McKinnon's post, but, but somehow or other we saw that in Vulture. And we learned about that, and I guess you would have learned about that on Twitter, but you have to sift through so much junk on Twitter. Yeah. Don't you? I don't know. I, I enjoy Twitter's Twitter. is such a cesspool. Well, you've got Twitter issues that I don't have. Twitter <laughs> is my, Twitter's my place. Twitter is where Twitter, news breaks for me. Twitter feels like to me I'm having a stroke. Well, you I are. read stuff on Twitter and I go, I just read 140 characters and I have no idea what, because it's get, because in order to get stuff in 140 characters, people get cryptic, they get weird abbreviations, and part of it is also because of the 140 characters, 90 are hashtags, and it looks like gobbledygook, and it makes me feel like I'm, my brain isn't working. Well, Google, I want to read English prose. I can see how Google Plus would be. Um, it's what it does. Would be. There's a no great limit. Place for you. 
yeah. because uh, it also does support hashtags. Uh, this it's got the best of both worlds. Kitchen and here. that's one, yeah, there you go. That's his mm -hmm. uh, Nexus 6 battery life. And that's a very interesting oh, post. Oh, look at that. I don't have any cats in my Google Plus, which I really enjoy. Well, yeah. Even on Catterday. Well, maybe I should start posting some of the photos I that I took of my cats making cats. out with each other this morning. <sighs> you ban people who post cat pictures? I don't ban them. I just uh, mute them. <laughs> you just mute them. I just mute Trey them. Trey Ratcliffe. Anyway. Look uh, at that picture. Now, I, here's another reason to love Google+. Plus. A lot of HDR. Trey will also... Yeah, sometimes he overuse it. But he admits that. Okay, Trey will also post that on Facebook and Twitter. It will not look anywhere as good on Facebook because they recompress and they mm. do a horrible job. Mm -hmm. Google gives you a... An, all photographers agree, and Trey is one of the primary photographers on Google+, Plus who, who loves Google+, Plus, that this is the best place for them, best social network anyway, for them to show their pictures. Uh, because you get high quality images. Um, I, I just feel like, that. that look at that on it, Facebook, it? it doesn't compare. It does not compare. And well, Twitter, you won't, you, what, you'll see a little thumbnail maybe if you use the Twitter app. Twitter is trying to kill us, you know that. Okay. Twitter has decided that we, that we are the product and that they are trying to, I mean, I just, I feel like tw neither Twitter nor Facebook has our interests at heart. Oh, Whereas because Google, Google is. They do. They're not Google trying Plus, to sell advertising. Yeah, but no, they don't. The truth is, in a way, it's good that they don't really care about Google Plus. Mm -hmm. because, because they're it not, just sort of runs itself. And this is sort of Mike's point as well. They're not trying to be Facebook or Twitter. Twitter's trying to be Facebook. Facebook's trying to be Twitter. They're not, they're just being Google Plus, And I love it. I would, I, I agree with, read Absolutely read Chris Messina's post mm. and then read Mike Elgin's rebuttal to Chris Messina's post and then maybe spend some time on Google+. Plus. I don't know why you don't see stuff there. I think you should add some more people. It's just... I see great stuff. It's just not working. And I agree yeah. with Chris, but okay. whatever. Hey, I just thought it was interesting. Look at this. Interesting something Picture of Steve Jobs and Bill Gates in oh Steve's house. Wow. What what an interesting wall. That Steve's house is kind of adobe and weird. He's kind of got a cool like flock of seagulls haircut even. I know. This is obviously uh, the uh, the 80s. Yeah, strange. strange and and uh, and I just this isn't a photography discussion group. Um I I I have to admit there's a lot of Android and Google stuff here, but um Taylor Swift, who doesn't love Taylor Swift? Here she is at uh, the Victoria's Secret fashion show wearing okay. a sweater. Yeah, great. So, she's an okay. angel. She, uh, I, I don't dislike her. She's oh, great. I, I dislike her. Hey, let's move on. <laughs> She's let's the best move on person in the world. Reports that we might get a 12.2 inch iPad Air Plus <laughs> next April. You've been saying this for a year now. <laughs> I know. For a year now. I know. I'm starting to. I believe it though. I, I, I do believe you. It. Yes. Yeah. Do you think it's because you know, and and some of the. The write-ups about this say, it just makes sense. I mean, we're getting bigger phones. Now we need bigger iPads because there needs to be more of a distinction between the sizes. I so if think... you've got something like the iPhone 6 Plus that is not that much smaller than an iPad mini, well, let's, let's get some bigger iPads because people like big. I think it's thrashing. Thrashing? I think Apple's noticed, as we all have, the drastic decline in growth in iPad sales. And I think they're saying, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Let's try some other stuff. Notice, I think they've really abandoned the Mini, and I think you're right. That's because of the 6 Plus. Yeah. There was a, I saw a recent study that said um, 5S owners still use their iPad more than half the time, mm -hmm. but 6 Plus owners only use their iPad maybe a third to a quarter of the time. They, they tended to use their 6 Plus because it's big enough. You know, there's uh, the company Pocket, obviously, which has a great iPad app that helps you uh, save Love stuff it. from other places to read later. Love it's it. kind of like the next generation of Instapaper, but works quite well with multimedia. Um, the folks over at Pocket, um, at getpocket.com, actually posted something on this very subject saying, because they can look and see what devices people that's, are using. That's what I was talking about, right uh, there. Yeah, and they say... When you've got an iPhone 6 Plus versus the iPad, well, things start looking really different because you've got this screen that's kind of already big-ish, and you get used to it, and you don't really feel the need to get bigger. Now, it's even worse than I said. One in five, 20 percent iPad use versus 80 percent iPhone 6 Plus use, and you go back to the 5S, a smaller screen, it's still much more than half the uh, the iPad over the uh, 5S. Now, as a iPhone 6 Plus, you like the bigger user, ones. Yeah, took me a while. But I am on board. I do enjoy it very much now. I'm just used to it, I think, is, is, is really more than anything. 
and I do notice, mm -hmm. and I, you know, it pains me to say mm -hmm. it, just a tiny bit, just because it's iPad today, but mm -hmm. I do notice that I reach for the iPad less mm -hmm. when I'm reading something that's a little bit longer form, mm -hmm. and that used to be why if it was visual or it was more than like a paragraph or two, I really just wanted the bigger form factor. Don't get me wrong, iPad is still, you know, it's my, my little reading companion at night, but I do, I have noticed my own behavior changing. Where it used to be very distinct. I've, iPhone was for certain things, yeah. iPad was for other things. Now iPhone does a lot of those other things. That's just uh, the uh, Nexus 6. And you've got 6. the same issue, yeah. Giant uh, screen, I, I find myself, uh, so, you know when I use the iPad the most mm. uh, is the beginning and the end of the day. When I get up and I'm eating my... <laughs> when you were a kid, did you read cereal boxes? Mm, That's no. what I did. So, we would get the Wheaties, the Corn Flakes, or the, you know, the Cap'n Crunch. We'd put the cereal box there. We'd have the bowl. We'd read the cereal box. Dad's eating, reading the newspaper. Mom's cooking bacon because that's what moms did in the 50s. But I'm just sitting there reading the back of the box. So I find nowadays what I do as I'm eating my brand muffin and drinking my decaf is I, uh, I used to have the iPad out. That's, what, that's when I would look at the iPad. It'd be set up just kind of like the back of a cereal box, and I'd be doing it. And now what I find is I, I don't as much bring out the iPad. The other time I use the iPad a lot, and I still do on this one, is while I'm watching TV. Mm. Uh, you're sitting there. You're in the, in the, in the recliner. Yeah. Uh, you've got Matlock on. And you want to, you know, you're just, you like, uh, you're reading uh, Grit while you're watching Matlock. Yeah, it's and that's better than kinda... having the hot laptop on your lap. Yeah, I just, it's a perfect size. Yeah. Um, but I also notice, again, that, you know, I keep the phone by my side because it might ring somebody, you know, I might need a notification. It, it, this is more active than an iPad, iPad. And so, as a result, maybe I don't get up and get the iPad as much as I used to. So maybe you think I just, that Apple's enough. like, we got to go big. We got to go big to I, give that size distinction back to the consumer. Uh, no. Well, I think why they're thrashing. Else? I think they're desperate. I think they realize. In fact, what I think is going to happen is just as the iPod was cannibalized by the iPhone, the iPad is going to be cannibalized by the iPhone. I don't think you're going to turn around sales, but I think what they're trying to do is 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 gin up some sales by trying some other form factors. But why would you use it? Why would if you're turning away from an iPad for a smaller device? Why would a bigger device entice you? How would that help? I don't know. What's your use case? I don't know. It's sort of like we're all trying to figure out how small can we go before we just get the one device. It's going to be one. And this is somewhere around that the writing, size. The writing's on the wall. I know this is iPad today, and I should be, but I'm, I can't be a cheerleader. I'm going to tell you what I really think well, is we happening. we can also, you know, the show evolves with the technology that it, yeah. it the supports. The iPad is a revolution. There's no question about it. And when it came out in 2010, it was really the way a computer should be. And yeah. I still to this day tell so many people, don't buy a computer, buy an iPad. Mm. You don't need a computer for a lot right. of people. Yeah. You need a tablet. It's safer, it's easier, it's more secure. However, uh, and by the way, those are not people using six-inch phones. Those people are probably going to continue to buy the iPad. But what, you, but what we do see is early adopters like you and me, people on the front line of the technology curve, who are starting to turn away from their tablets and, uh, and using their phones. I think the other reason that iPad sales are, are not growing as fast is because everybody has one, and a Apple has yet to find a compelling reason, reason to buy one. If you already have an iPad Air, why do you need an Air 2? I, I don't need it. But that's where I think you might make the argument a 12-inch would help. Mm -hmm. Because then that, that is something different. So you might say, oh, well, yes, I have an iPad Air, but here's a, here's a big one. Maybe that's... But I don't think they know for sure. I well, think I think you know, there's there's the idea that it could be better for the enterprise market, for schools. I hope so. I think the iPad's not going away. And notice, I don't say the iPad sales are going down. I say growth is slowing. For sure. And they that are is selling true. fine. Right. It's just not the boom market that it was for the it's first maturing. few years. It's a mature market now. Yeah, yeah. And these things happen much faster than they used to. Uh, yeah, I'll say. Yeah. Um, yeah, in fact, there was a, um, a study in, uh, from IDC that iPad has seen its first ever decline as the tablet shipment growth overall drops, you know, 7%-ish in 2014, which just means, again, just like you said... They're growing 7%, or what is, this, what is the growth percentage? 
Drops two or drops 7.2%? 7.2. So what is the growth percentage? I don't say that. but uh, Well, not in the headline. Yeah, somewhere it's, in there. It's in there. Uh, tablet shipments between 2012 and 2013 grew 52.5%, but so they are it declined growing. the last year yeah. to, oh, I can't see that, 12.7%. Uh, it, it on the total number of shipments. Well, that yeah, so we're sort of looking at two numbers here. We're looking at overall tablet shipments, and then we're looking at iPads specifically, right. and both are slowing. It's my understanding, I may be wrong, that it's growth that's slowing, that they're still selling it plenty is. of iPads. Basically, in 2014, growth slowed quite a right. bit, because a lot of people just have iPads that's now. That's what I think. That's what I think, too. But what'll happen is the sales of larger phones go up. Mm. Oh, that helps a lot. Give me that. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck am I looking at? I don't know. I Something don't know good. Either. Well, it's it's that's worldwide tablet sales. So so yeah, that's we're adding in quite a few other tablets, but the iPad is still the number one. Um, I I have to say, uh, if you're going to get a tablet, the iPad, and I told somebody this on the radio show on Sunday, the iPad's still the tablet to get. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not convinced that you need to get a tablet if you already have a big phone, and I guess that's the issue, is that they're probably going to continue to sell iPads to people who don't have big phones, right? Yeah. Like your mom. Yeah. 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 Do you think a day will come when you won't use your iPad? You got a 6 Plus. Well, I, it's not here yet. I mean, I, right. I don't, I'm not sure. No, I, I have both of them already, so it's if, not like I'm like, ooh, now I need to ditch my iPad. If, I just think it's easier for somebody to justify having just the one. Right. And if you weren't doing this show, you probably wouldn't have felt the need to get an Air 2. No, I know I wouldn't have. And I don't recommend it to anybody who yeah. already has the air. Unless, I don't know, you just like, I'm rich. Or And, and you're a strong, uh, as am I, strong iPad fan. Yes. We love our iPads. I have love one it. at home. I have one at work. Absolutely. And if we're not buying new iPads every moment, well, I wonder who is. Yeah. It's just if you've got, and we talked about this last week. If you had missed, you know, maybe the iPad Air, you're still rocking the iPad 3 or iPad 2 or whatever. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. What but could you do to the iPad? It is negligible, really, how it's different from the original. If iPad. you're Apple and you and you determine, and I'm not sure Apple wants to do this, mm. they may be perfectly happy to sell more iPhone sixes, right? But what if you said, okay, corporate policy, we want to sell more iPads. What would you do to the iPad to sell more iPads? I have no idea. They sell a crap ton. They already sell a lot. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, Bring them down in price. I mean, the margins are the high. Price is, the price is high. Yeah. Uh, you, you can get tablets for half as much mm -hmm. that are probably as good, except they don't run iOS. That's the thing, is people want that. The, in want many iOS. cases, yeah, they, they, want, they what want the kind better, of apps that... Uh, so lower you know. the price would be one. Mm. Apple historically doesn't do that, but maybe they would. How about a better camera? Would that help? Possibly. I'd love to see a, uh, like a really good camera on the iPad. The rumor is, and you saw John Gruber said this, that the next generation iPhone is going to make a great leap forward in its camera. And that's pretty much what you have to do because you can't change, uh, Apple doesn't typically change the form factor mm -hmm. every year. So what you could put a better camera in. So what if they make a big leap in cameras in the iPhone and in the iPad? Would that sell? I would think that might sell. If I thought, hey, this is going to be a great camera, I might get a new iPad for that. Screen can't get much better. It's already great. Problem is they made it too well. It's too good. Well, you know, since the iPad prices aren't going down probably anytime soon, more than they have at least once we got the new models, I worry a little bit about my personal finances and how to make sure that if I'm buying, <laughs> if I'm buying these expensive gadgets, then, you know, I don't get into the hole. Now, it is true these are expensive, but I'm not thinking that uh, your investments should really be planned around the iPad release cycle. <laughs> I'm thinking you should maybe have you a... You don't know me very well, Well, then. I guess not. I'm thinking, though, a better would be have a kind of a longer term. Exactly. Maybe planning to buy a house. Your rent, you've said, is, is very high. Astronomical. In fact, uh, a good financial advisor would say, well, you probably should buy a house. The payments would be the same. But the tax break would be so significant that you'd save a couple of thousand dollars a month. Yeah. You want to give me a down payment? Well, now you got to save for the down payment. Exactly, and you I don't know how to do that. Personal capital. I just don't. You know, I don't. I don't have these skills. You still haven't signed up for it, I bet. I have. Oh, good. So what you do? Personal capital is free, by the way. You sign up. Takes just a minute to get all the data in there. Once you've got the data in there, uh, you are going to get a single-page dashboard on your computer, your tablet, your phone. 
even your watch. They have uh, they have they have support for Android Wear watches of where you stand, of how your investments are doing. It will tell you things. What is that? They have a Cyber Monday special. Everybody's doing that. Oh, look at that. All right. I, it's not in the ad, but I think you should go to the website right now and see the deal they're offering if you get there in time. It, that's great. Personalcapital.com slash iPad today. That's our special site. And here's the deal. You're going to sign up for free. You're going to get all of this data. They will tell you where you're spending money unwisely. For instance, it's very possible to have investments that are eating away at your investment because of fees. Or maybe you're paying somebody for advice, and that person isn't giving you the best advice, or maybe they're, uh, they're costing you more than they ought to. Personal capital is really about wealth management, growing your wealth, making your money work for you. And I'll tell you what, if you start now, Sarah, young Sarah Lane, mm. if you start now and start planning, you'll be able to buy a new iPad in a, in a blink of an eye. Great. Yeah. That's what I want. No, you'll be able to buy a house. You'll, be, you'll have a retirement that works. Over half a million people are now using personal capital to manage their money. And it's free, and you should try it. And if you don't, you're missing out. The sooner you start, the sooner you can start living it up personalcapital.com slash iPad today. Try it today. Got an email from Scott uh, who noticed that, remember you were asking uh, Siri something the other day and you were talking and it was right aligning and I was like, why is it doing that? Yeah. That's so s weird. Yeah. Scott says, well, Sarah seemed confused when Siri right aligned Leo's input, but Siri does that to denote your side of the conversation. It's like uh, the, the, the Messages app, right? She will left align her responses she's just on, like in the Messages she's app. She's on the left, you're on the right. Yeah, so, duh, that's a very good call, Scott. I don't, it just seemed weird, I guess, before Siri responded that it was right aligned, but I hate right aligned. I'll be honest, I can tell what was me and what was Siri without that. Yeah. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm particularly but perspicacious. I, I, I think Apple wants you to think of you having a conversation with ah, Siri. You know what I mean? Right. Like Siri is this little robot lady right. in there. Uh, I got another email from Rich who says on last week's show, mm -hmm. you mentioned that it's now possible to upload fo photos to iCloud.com directly from PC, but you said it seemed kind of pointless since if you already have iCloud turned on, all of your photos are already on your phone in iPad. And your iPad yeah. Rich says, no, no, I disagree. I used an iPad and a Windows phone for a long time, till the iPhone 6 came out. But during that time, I really wish that there was an easier uh, way to put my photos in iCloud. From her, from his Windows phone. From his Windows phone, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So it was always weird, because I'd open up photos on my iPad Air, and it would just show, you know, just a few photos that I had saved over time, but not the ones that were on my phone. So he says, I think Apple's successful because they never really give their users a reason to leave. I don't know a lot of Android users that have any intention of switching over, but for the people who have, let's say, an Android phone and an iPad, that could be a way of baiting them into switching. Love it. Yeah. That makes sense. I think that's a good call. Uh, it makes perfect sense to me as well. And I, yeah, I really didn't think about it that way. Yeah. Oh, this is for people who have other devices that have a ton of photos on there and you want there to be some sort of cross-platform sync. That's actually... Apple sort of saying, here's right. a little bit of a cumbersome cross-platform sync. One of the reasons we don't think of it is because you probably do this too. I use Dropbox, mm -hmm. which is cross-platform, so I put it on all my phones. I use OneDrive, cross-platform, all my phones. Facebook, cross-platform, all my phones. Flickr, cross-platform, all my phones. And all four of those platforms automatic. And with Smugbug, all, four, all five of those platforms automatically upload every picture I take to those various sites. Yeah, That's probably overkill. Well, you just don't need iCloud then at that nope. point at all. It's overkill, but again, if you care about your stuff and you're worried about maybe any of those I have to cloud think, I solutions have to, going away at I some point. I have to point. pick one or yeah. two. It's kind of crazy to upload to five different places. It's just a lot of... The reason I do Facebook is because it, it's there and it's easy to re, to share it because I could say, pick that picture and share it. I don't mm -hmm. have to upload it. Dropbox has that great carousel we showed last week. Yeah. So I feel like Dropbox is kind of a nice... Flickr's auto. got all that space. Flickr's a terabyte for free. Yeah. OneDrive is unlimited space. Yeah. So that's part of the reason I can't... I'm, I don't know who I'm going to end up with. And Smugbug, because that's where uh, I would really like to share my good quality photos on Smugbug. Uh, we got another email, quite a few actually this week, uh, Steve in New Hampshire, who says, Thanks for your photo app tips recently. Got me thinking, though. Many apps now have the ability to offer extensions, right? So shouldn't you be able to use a lot of your different photo apps, editing capabilities, within the camera roll's edit function now, 
instead of switching back and forth between apps. Remember, Apple That's sort new, of promised right? this. That's yeah. an eight. That was iOS eight. The um, the ability for apps to work together more closely. I think they will. It just takes time. The developers, and because not everybody's using eight. You also don't want to leave people with seven out. Yeah, but I mean, I am using iOS eight, and granted, I do. Um, I use more uh, photo apps out and about on my iPhone rather than my iPad, just because I have it more. But one of the things, because I really like to um, double up or even triple up sometimes on photo apps to get like a really cool effect. You know, I'll open something in Snapseed, and then when I'm done editing there, so I go ahead and say, all right, let's you know pull up a really cute photo of you know, my cats. They were under the bed this morning, it was really adorable. Uh, you know, so I go ahead and like edit in here, and then when I'm done, what I want is for Snapseed to say, oh, would you like to open this possibly in ViscoCam? Well, they don't have that yet. I don't know why, look at all oh, the other I places. You know, you know what I mean? So it's so, in the share sheet, it's not... Uh... Right. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, thought, I'm sure it'll happen. I thought they were talking about I'm sure it'll Adding happen features event. directly to the camera app. Well, you could do that too. Yeah. But but not everybody does that either. Correct. And I think that's going to take time. I thought that's what he wanted to know is oh. why aren't more people adding themselves to the camera app? That's what they do on Windows Phone. So this would be, you know, if you take a photo and you say, all right, well, now where is it going to go? So you've got, you, you do have some options, right? Yeah. In the More tab, there's, there's definitely stuff. But yeah, eventually... These act but I don't, activities. I can't extend the camera with other apps. I thought I could. Um, Maybe not. Well, you you can right now. These these are some of them that you can. Well, that's share sheet stuff, though. Oh, you mean camera or photos? Camera. Oh, camera. I, I guess I can't. I thought I could. Well, that would be strange, though, because you've got to take the photo first. No, the way it works in um, on Windows Phone, for instance, you'll install a uh, blur app. And it will appear in two different places. It'll be a blur app, but it'll also be a lens for your camera. And you can choose you can choose it as one of the camera functions. Oh, 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 oh. I thought oh, you oh, could oh. do that. Am I wrong? No, I don't think Apple wants to bring Extend in... Extend the camera? I don't think they want to bring in functionality from other apps. That would be weird. They're just letting you easily send it over to another app. I think that's no, the no, whole no, point no. Look, of extensions, look. right? Actually, it comes, yeah. but you're right, it's not in the camera. Yeah. So here's a lovely picture I took oh. of you. You're... Let's cancel. So let's go back to where I came from. So I'm in the camera. I pick my my photo gallery. That's, I guess they went back to photo roll, right? Edit. Yeah. And you okay. see these three dots. I can add functionality. So the one thing that we have that is uh, does this is the flare effects that I, I think it was my app cap some time ago. So now I can use flare effects, and this and this will add the capabilities of flare effects. But you're right, it's post-processing. Yeah. But in effect, this is all done in the camera roll. Okay. So I can I can use my flare effects within the camera roll. And presumably, and I don't know if this is what our correspondent was talking about, but presumably more, there'd be more in this more at some point. So and these are these are functions added to. So camera that's like roll. the first app on your iPad that actually has baked in functionality yeah. into the camera. And app. it kind of feels like it's still in the camera roll. Well, uh, hey, if, it, it is technically post-processing, but if you actually are doing that in the camera app, that is pretty cool. Right. Because that's actually a reason that I always send stuff other places. Well, now you don't have to do... That's exactly right. It's not in the share sheet. Yeah. Um, it's in the more button. And then you, that's so strange for uh, independent app branding, though, isn't it? There I, you go. Oh, oh my God! It's, it's sort of like it's like go. the fiery hells of, you of, know, of, tablets. Of Europe. That's a very strange. Why is it like at an angle? I kind of like it. I look like it's I'm. It's just a wild effect. Been thrown in a, you know, a, a burning. Or I could, I could be peering at you. Burning. Through the. Uh, grease. Through the barrel. Uh, the TV set. Yeah. Okay. It's very. Uh, it's very. The ring. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So these are fun. Uh, this season, is Flare. I, I think it was an app cap of mine some time ago. Yeah, I, yeah. I believe you're right. Yeah. I believe you're right. Okay, so I'm not sure what he's talking about. I, I, I think actually that's what Steve was talking about. The ability to add these functionalities into, yes. into post-processing. What I would also like is just more apps to extend to each other. Let's say I just don't use the camera app. Let's say I use another app. Well, I what would, if, for I just, instance, why Hipsta don't they? Hipstamatic, when you installed Hipstamatic, then allowed you to add 
the Hipstamatic choices to your camera. So you didn't have to choose the Hipstamatic camera. You could be in the official Apple camera, but then there'd be an item, menu item that says Hipstamatic. That would be amazing. Wouldn't you like that? Yeah, because yeah. that's that's why I'm not in Hipstamatic more. Right, because you have to remember to load it. Hipstamatic has so many variables, and you, know, you got to choose your uh, your film and your lens yeah. and your, you know, uh, uh, You're right, it's not ISO. a very Apple-y way of doing things, so you might be right. Yeah, that's why most people are like, Hipstamatic, why do you even bother? But, but, look, but look, they did do this in the camera roll, which is not a very Apple-y way of doing things either. It's kind of hard to find. So just once again, you, when you're looking at a picture from your camera roll, you press edit, this three dot thing, mm -hmm. and then you, if you try it with flare, it's the only one I have on here, but presumably others will be able to. And you can literally add it or subtract it by, by pressing the off button. Yep. Uh, yeah, and that's, um, it's yes. kind of cool. It's kind of cool. We got another email from John in Palmdale, California, uh, and he says it's about an hour north of L.A., depending on traffic, because he says, I really like the uh, um, estimated time of arrival notification app tip that we covered a couple of weeks ago. He says, this got me thinking, though. Do you know of an app that can show multiple estimated times based on the time that you plan on leaving and based on past traffic conditions? For example, uh, uh, John says, I sometimes have to commute to Los Angeles, and depending on the time of day, it could take 45 minutes, it could take over two hours. Is there an app that would let me give, that would give me the estimated time of arrivals, or ETAs, for destinations based on the time that I leave and historical traffic conditions? My goal is to minimize the time I spend in my car because I could be doing better things like watching your show. Yes, I agree. I agree as well. Now... Does ETA not do that? I thought it would take advantage of the... Maybe Waze? Well, that's where I was hoping you would know. Okay, so <laughs> I, yes, I've let you allow. down. No, no, you haven't. You haven't at all. I just know that you there like is Waze a traffic. A lot. There wait, is a wait. traffic thing that you can add to your uh, uh, today list that will show you traffic conditions. I don't see any right now, but. Well, but, but what he's saying is should I leave now or should I just wait an hour? Right. That kind of thing. Now, I oh, believe... I would love that. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, because, yes. I would, you know, you'd rather, like, sit comfortably here than in your right. car. I would, anyway. Right. But I believe... I mean, Waze is all about... Waze is using all of the data that we are all giving it day after day to give you the best traffic well, conditions certainly, possible. Well, certainly, if you launch Waze... So, you know, historical conditions are all being factored into yeah. that. So, if you launch Waze... Uh, I don't have it set up on here because this doesn't have GPS in it. But if you launch Waze and you have already set it up with your uh, home address, mm -hmm. you can tap that at any given time and it will tell you how long it's going to take to get home based on current conditions. Right. So, but uh, he wants it in notification. He says, he's basically I saying, okay, so that's that. fine, but then let's say, let's slide it out a couple of hours yeah. and see what the situation is. The problem with Waze is that it's all very real time. You know, if there's a traffic accident right now, Waze is very good about telling you, oh, you know, when you go around this bend, you're going to have an issue. I'll tell you what. It's not so good at knowing how long it'll take to clear that accident. If you use, uh, this is kind of not apple -y, but it is on iPad if you use Google Now. Uh -huh. Google Now uh, will, if you use it, so you got to start to start to use it, but as you turn it on, um, it will eventually start to see, this one doesn't because I don't take it home, but if I show it to you on my iPhone, it knows that I go where my home is, where my work is, and it will tell me. And if I have an appointment, in fact, this does this all the time for shows, it'll say leave now to get to iPad today. It doesn't exactly give you what you want, which is, well, how long would it take if I leave now or leave in an hour? Yeah. But it will tell you if you want to get somewhere, you need to leave now. That's kind of a nice feature. Turn on Google Now. Yes. Um, which is totally usable inside of the, um, the Google app. Yeah. Like you have to launch the app, which is... Yeah. And you have to use it. And I think a lot of iOS folks aren't really uh, tied into the Google Now uh, ecosystem. I'm, but on my phone, where it, it knows uh, where I'm going, it, it tells me where I parked. <laughs> I don't... Okay, so it knows I'm not going home in the next few minutes. But if it knew if I was going home, it would say it's seven minutes to home. Mm -hmm. And it would show me where the, the traffic where the traffic is and yeah, stuff like that. Because it, it is starting to know your habits. Like you're right. just never really leaving right around. It this even time. tells me when my bills are due. Well, my AT and T bill is due tomorrow. Pay it. Yeah. Better pay that bill. Yeah. Stories I'd be interested in based on what I've read lately. Um so but I don't know of anything that puts it in notifications. If ETA doesn't, 
Um, I don't know if anything else. ETA is so great. I can't show it on here because it doesn't work on this iPad because I don't have GPS. You have to have yeah. GPS. We found that out. Uh -huh. I wanted to show you, but I couldn't. Uh huh. We do love your feedback. Oh, Questions God, are great because then it gives us a chance to like research some stuff that maybe we hadn't thought of before. Of course, app suggestions, all that good stuff. We love, we love hearing from you. You can write us at iPad Today at twit.tv. I petted it at twit.tv. Yeah, that's right. You can uh, send us a voicemail <laughs> at 757-504-IPAD. Sometimes when I say a URL I'm, or like an email address, I'm like, is that even is right? Is that right? Because you, know? you never enter it yourself. It's like your home phone number. Yeah, or just you say a word enough times and you're like, how's that a word? Uh, but 757-504-IPAD uh, is the voicemail box to leave us a little note. You can always upload a video somewhere and send it to us. Try to keep it to somewhere around 30 seconds or less. That would be awesome. And thanks in advance for everybody who helps us put our show together each week. What'd you have for dinner last night? Holy. So, I, I wrote you an email, which you probably didn't read because you don't read the things that I send you. However, with Blue Apron... I did read that email. Did you? Yes. Uh, yesterday, I decided... I wanted to, like, a, it was raining, you know, and it was cold in San Francisco, and I did not want to leave my house. And I realized, ugh, you know, I'm just, like, it's like 5 p.m., and I kind of want to eat early, and I'm just feeling so blah. I wanted some soup. And then I thought, wait a second, oh my gosh, I have a Blue Apron um, dinner that I haven't made yet, which was the lamb butternut squash <gasps> soup. You said you were going to bring some. I forgot. I actually forgot because I mailed. You were hoping it. I didn't read that email. That's what you were hoping. You did read that email. I was ready for that, that soup. I did forget. It was good? It was so good. Now, Blue Apron, the idea is you get the box. It's a refrigerated box, uh, and it contains every ingredient you need. And by the way, exactly the amount. So one lemon. You know, a bunch of parts. It's not like all the extra stuff that you get when you go shopping and then you never use. Yeah. It's exactly what you need, plus these beautiful recipes, which are always different. And it's on nice, thick cardstock. It's like you're building a collection of, for your cookbook. So it was, a, it was good. It was so good. And I am, uh, you know, fairly new. Well, I'm not new to meat, but I, I'm still getting used to cooking it at home. But, like, I never would have been uh, brave enough to just, to like... lamb. No, yeah. and and also to me, I was like lamb and butternut squash, huh? Oh, and I but need a is bay that a good leaf, combination? And I need a. There were all these things, and I thought, well, I don't know. Let's put them all together. Blue Apron gave me everything. You know, it they tells gave you how me, to do it. Gave me two little it's bay like, leaves exactly. and some thyme. It's, it's not a whole jar of bay leaves. It's two bay leaves. Just just what you, just need, what you need, plus an extra in case it falls on the floor. That type of thing. And I made it, and it was so good. And it actually said it was two servings. Easily would have eat, you know, served four people. Well, the way they price it is, it is it's two servings, and it's $9.99 per person per meal. So that would have been uh, $20 worth of uh, right. food. But I'm saying that they, I think they err on the side of oh, sure. big stomach. So there was plenty of food. I'll be eating that uh, tonight as well. Isn't that great? Mm, if so it's, good. it's really nice if you love to cook or you want to learn to cook. It's good for somebody who wants to learn to cook. Really good. Uh, but you don't have time to shop. Yeah. Or as I, even I have time to shop, I'm kind of like, oh, I got to do meal planning. I have to think to get a recipe. This right. makes it all so easy. But you still get a beautifully, freshly prepared meal. Now, if you're saying, well, I don't like lamb, don't worry. You pick mm -hmm. the meals you're going to get. That's right. There are no repeats. All the ingredients come from local farms. So you're going to get products that is not only uh, fresh, but it's in season. And I like that. Um, it is less expensive than eating out. You get the satisfaction of actually cooking. If you're if you're uh, if you're courting a person, this is the best way oh my to get somebody to fall in love with you. I was thinking that last night as I was making this. Put out two candles because it smelled so good. And I go, looked like I knew what I was doing with a recipe that I right. clearly did not. You're a gourmet chef. But all I did was follow the directions with food that had been delivered it's to so my great. home. It's it so was great. I. I I'm a fan. Cooking time on all of these recipes, about half an hour. Yeah. Shipping's always free. The menu always features new recipes. You're never going to get the same meal twice, but you get to keep the recipe card. So now you've made it once. You could make it again. You know how. Um, they will work around your schedule and your dietary preferences. They will give you incredible meals, often designed by celebrity chefs. That really? uh, Oh, the Pork and Congi was from a winner of the Iron Chef competition oh. who has her own restaurant. I can't remember where it is, but... It was incredible. I am a big fan, and I want you to try it right now. We've got a special deal. Two meals free. Go to blueapron.com slash twit. Two meals free. See what's on the menu this week. Blueapron.com slash twit. And let us know what you think of uh, Blue Apron. I think this is such a great idea. The meats are fresh. 
I, I had salmon and it was very oh, fresh because yeah. the these boxes are great. They keep it cold. And by the way, they're completely recyclable, so you don't have to worry about that. In fact, I often save the refrigeration material and freeze it because it's great for putting in a you know cooler or oh, an ice pack. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah, save it. Don't oh, throw it away. Well, it's great. Blueapron.com slash twit. I like your chapeau. Well, is that what this is? It's a chapeau. It's a chapeau? That okay. must mean it's app cap time. I thought it was a cowboy hat with stripes. How do you like my chapeau? I like it. It's great. It's uh, it's a hat. It's a flower. It's uh, some hair. You look like Sam Kinison. <laughs> ah! <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Whatever happened to him? I probably had a heart attack. No yeah, one. Probably. All no, he's young. still around. He's Easy. a great guy. Yeah. Is he? He doesn't shout all the time. I think he died. Actually. You know who I saw? Yeah, he did die. Okay. Uh, you know the last thing. Never mind. I can't. It's a bad joke. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know who's still alive though? Well, who? Bobcat Goldthwait. Goldthwait. You'd think he'd be dead from his high energy performance. Right. And what's funny? Maybe he doesn't do a lot of talking outside of the performance. He doesn't. And I've seen I've seen him perform, and he was very calm. Mm. But then he was in that uh, Woody Allen movie a couple of years ago, and he was great in was that. He? I don't think I saw that. Oh, you did, but you forgot that it was him. Yeah, it's the one with Kate Blanchett that she was nominated for the Academy oh, Award. Oh, uh, blue, blue, uh, blue Jasmine. Or, uh, yeah, Jasmine. He is in that. He's, he is? He is her sister's husband, that annoying husband, is Bobcat Goldthwait. Oh. And he's great in it. No. Unless I'm stoned. You're stoned. Oh, and it was D Andrew Dice Clay. You're stoned. Andrew Dice Clay. God. But it was Andrew Dice Clay. Am I right? <laughs> yes. It's because I'm wearing, it's, I'm a redhead. What do you want? Well, it's, yeah, I know. Bobcat Goldthwait is not in the movies. No, the I, was, I was like... He was? No, you know I what really I was? I really think I, I would have noticed. I was watching uh, the movie he was in with Robin Williams the other day, and it got me confused. So this is the part of the show where He's Leo directed and I... a number of episodes of Louie. Oh, okay. So there. All right. This is the part of the show where Leo and I put on hats, and we talk about apps that we like and think that you might like as well. So I mentioned at the top of the show that we were going to play a game completely with emojis. This is actually an app that was created by um, one of our viewers named Ivan. Who sent it in and he oh, said neat. he said i think you might like this it's been featured you know on some of the tech blogs people seem to like it maybe give it a try it's called emoji cosmos all right so i liked <laughs> i liked the uh the album art good start the, the app art and i thought okay let's give this a go now as you can see those are all emojis this is complete every single thing that this game uh shows graphically is an emoji. That's kind of cool. Of various shapes and sizes, even the little speaker, right? So yeah. I go ahead and press play. Okay. And now what I'm doing yeah. is I'm just trying to oh avoid those bowling balls. All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Upper right hand corner, there's an X. Oh, there is. Okay, there you go. Okay, let's try again. Now you, now you got can three people yeah, in the rocket. Yeah, I got rocket. a policeman. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and try to avoid the bowling avoid balls. Avoid. There are no bowling balls unless you. S oh, oh, oh! See, this is really hard. This, this is, is like worse Flappy, than Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird, hard. yeah. Same idea, but I do have to say, I am, I am, ah! I'm really impressed with the emoji land. It's kind of fun. It's emoji land. It's emoji Why land. Is so hard. Why am I? Is it? Is even the explosion made out of emojis? Yes, it is. That's okay, awesome. this is infuriating. I was better earlier, you guys. So there's some, uh, the, the app is free. There's obviously some advertising pop-ups that are m minorly annoying. But if you like... Nice job, Ivan. That's fun. I and think it, so. And think of all the money he saved on graphic Dang, designers. Dang, it's because it goes the opposite of what I think. That's what's going on. Ah, you're starting to learn. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just, it's, mm. it's frustrating, but I, I get what I'm doing wrong. I just don't know how to... Okay, see, okay. I think uh, you need you know to use what? both hands. I, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I should do that. Yeah. Oh, that. no, now she's going to try some more. Darn it. You don't need to put your fingers on that particular... Never know. That you know did what? not help all right. at all. You know what, all. Leo? I've had it with you. So, one of the I've things... I've had it with everybody. I'm so frustrated. <laughs> Stupid game. One of the Ivan. things I've enjoyed lately... It is lately, free, though. It is free. Yeah. One of the things I've enjoyed lately uh, is that the iPad is such a good gaming platform. We're seeing games that were originally designed for high-end consoles and even PCs migrate their way... Uh, down to the iPad. I was a big fan of the Odd World games. This was a series of games, Abe's Odd World, and a bunch of them that were on PC, uh, Xbox 360, 
Um, and, and maybe not even the three. It might have even been the, uh, the first Xbox. I can't remember, but maybe it was. I played this game, yeah, it was on the first Xbox with Henry when he was little. It's one of my all-time favorite games, and I was so pleased to see they brought it to the iPad. Odd World, Stranger's Wrath. This might have been the last of the Odd World games. Six dollars, very fair. Um, it's pretty much an exact faithful replica uh, of the original uh, Stranger's Wrath. You play a stranger who's come to town and uh, in a very weird town. Odd World is very odd. Um, and um, I love the uh, aesthetic of this. It's, com it's not like any game you've ever played before. The, the guns are composed of things like that odd creature. Oh, that's cool. Um, and so, uh, and, and that. <laughs> so it's kind of cartoonish, but... It's cartoonish, but it's a really good yeah. first-person yeah. uh, shooter. You play the stranger, and and that's a gun. You see, he fired those. This is actually, in a way, instructional uh, to show you how he would, say, fire those, and they sit on the edge, and then when a bad guy comes through the cave... Let's see if I can... Uh, I guess I can't skip the cutscene. This is the startup. Um, if you've ever played this game, it was some on the, on the uh, Xbox. I'm, I'm sad that Odd World did not continue. I thought that these were really innovative and different games, and instead, you know, the Call of Duty type uh, shooters ended up uh, winning. But this is a chance to go back a little bit in game time and maybe rediscover uh, something phenomenal. These are the poor little uh, amphibious denizens of this world. Their world is unfortunately uh, getting, is in a little bit of ecological trouble. And uh, you can see they're being hunted by these evil beings who even uh, take them and make stuff out of them. Uh, they're, they're peaceful, quiet people, so they need somebody to defend them, and that's, of course, the stranger. Now, he's a bounty hunter chasing him, so this is, this is right out of the original game, by the way. I should have probably skipped through this, but I just kind of want you to see it. And I can't skip it now, unfortunately. It looks like I'm... The first time you play it, you're stuck watching it. And those are the... He planted even, a even trap Even the bad form. guys are kind of cute, I have to Everything's say. Everything's cute in this. And I don't, I don't even think... You know, it's a little violent, but not in any really kind of creepy way. Um, you, you go on quests. You have to work your way through a bunch of levels, um, acquiring abilities and becoming more sophisticated and having more sophisticated weapons as time goes by. But I didn't mind my 10-year-old uh, my uh, Henry playing this game. I, I think... Uh, uh, we really enjoyed it. We played it together. I can't and, imagine what it looked like, though, when he was 10. Well, it was on an Xbox. It wasn't this good. And so you're right. Yeah. This is what's really interesting is it's, it's at this point, the, the, iPad, the iPad is better than uh, the top-of-the-line consoles were at that time. So this, that was all by way of preamble to set you up so that you can kind of understand the world you're in and so forth. Touch and drag on the left side of the screen to move Stranger around. Now, this is where we get into that thing that I don't like. In order to port a console game, you've got, of course, use weird controls that aren't really iPad native. Mm -hmm. But it's the usual one. You move the camera around on the right side. You you go forward, and you can, uh, you know, on the left side. So uh, let's see. How do I get rid of that? I guess if I move, oh, yeah, it's going to go away. So it, this is actually probably pretty accurately the same uh, graphics as on the uh, Xbox, I would I would guess. Yeah, once you get into the yeah. actual gameplay. Yeah. Find a little friend. Yeah, and I've forgotten how to play this game. It's been so long. Move close to the fallen outlaw. Then facing then him. Then facing him, press, press and hold, and hold the X button, button, and I'm going to bounty him. I put him in my bounty gun, and I've captured him alive. You get more points for alive than dead, which is nice. And that's the stranger. It's kind of dark. I don't know. Should I turn it up just a little bit? Yeah, maybe. A little bit brighter. Yeah, you can see a little bit better. Fight your way to town through the outlaw encampment to bring your bounty in. So we're going to have to find a path to the... Ah, oh, there we go. There's elevators. There's all sorts of controls. Odd buttons. I'm riding up a mine shaft right now on a, mi on a car. Uh-oh, here's some... Uh, this is the initial tutorial. I think well worth the few dollars that this game costs. It I believe costs... it's on sale. It's usually five ninety nine. I think it's four ninety nine. Oh, right nice. So, I I, you so. know, obviously I missed the place where I'm supposed to jump. This is training you to use the controls. 
I'm not sure I, I, I'm going to love playing this on the iPad, but I do love seeing this game again. Boy, it, this was so much fun to play this game. And it's got the same sounds, and yeah, it'd be nice. You know, don't they make iPad, uh, like, uh, game console controllers for the iPad? I think they do. I wonder if this would work on that. Some add-ons, yeah. Yes. We've seen some of those at CES. It's called Odd World Stranger's Wrath. It's a wonderful game. Highly recommend it. Um, it, it, you'd have to get farther in to see a lot of the charm of it because he starts getting interesting weapons with strange critters, and it's a lot of fun. Highly recommend it. Odd World, Stranger's Wrath. Get it now. Great game. From a guy in a clown hat. That's right. I wish you could see my flower. Our very own Kinnison. Uh, we can see it now. Yes. Oh, you're lovely. Thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of iPad Today. It's been a lot of fun. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Cyber Monday. And if Cyber Monday's over by the time you watch or listen, well, we are sorry. But hopefully you can get some tips from your holiday shopping because of us. <sighs> see you next time on iPad Today. Oh.